Hello everyone and welcome to my tutorial on creating a basic video project in Adobe Premiere Elements 12. This will not include voiceover, voiceover will be an expansion tutorial, this will simply be editing your project and getting the basic project set up in Premiere Elements 12. I will also be doing an expansion tutorial to specifically go over proper render settings and exporting to places like YouTube. Right, we're going to always launch the video editor because Elements Organizer is completely pointless, especially if you're primarily doing video editing. And the kind of editing that I am doing here. Yes, this is my this is my Adobe account. Thank you. Alright, so go ahead and load up Adobe Premiere Elements 12 here. It may, of course, as it did for me, ask you to sign into your account. That is okay gonna load up all the plugins. Alright, as soon as this window loads, as soon as you get into Premiere Elements 12, don't do anything. Go over to Expert. That is because what we are going to be doing requires the Expert view. The quick and guided views are basically like using Windows Movie Maker. Very restricted, not what we're wanting. So go ahead and find the files you're going to want to be using. For this video, I'm going to be using some clips from here. And we're just going to drag them on. They're not going to make a whole, whole lot of sense per se. But we're just going to get them. We're going to file some folders. Go to the place that they are at saved on your computer, which may be a memory card. It may be many things. For me, it's on a hard drive and in a folder. So we're going to grab some clips here of a new cadet story. Add it to Premiere Elements 12 and there we go, it's in our Project Assets folder. Now this is where all of the clips, all of the video files, all of the audio files, all the graphics you have will be saved for adding to your timeline, which is down here. The timeline is the visible portion of your video. So we're going to go ahead and get our first clip of an interview dragged on here. You're going to want to drag it to Video 1 and Audio 1. These are all just tracks so that way you can layer footage. And a good use of layering the footage would be for adding B-roll over an interview. Which we are going to do in this case right here. There's also a track for narration and soundtrack. You do not need to specifically use these tracks, but they're just there to better help you balance the audio and specify what the audio is for so you don't lose track of them basically. So here we have an interview. Let's go ahead and play it back. Here you see our preview window. Okay, right off the bat we're gonna want to cut out the reporter's voice. Yeah, the, you know, the reporter is not really supposed to be heard and so we're gonna cut out her voice. So it's just kind of this front bit. So we're going to use this bar on the right over here next to where it says render. And if we drag the slider, it actually zooms in the timeline so we can see better. And we're going to line it up. We're going to play it back again real quick. I'm just hitting space or you can use the play button right here. And you can see this wave, this entire waveform right here. I'll zoom in a little bit more. And that entire waveform is the reporter talking. So we line the playhead right here, basically the cursor that shows where we are. And we're gonna just kinda line it up to right before, you know, just a natural point right before and this guy starts talking. Now next to the spot in the timeline where we are, you're gonna see this little scissor icon. This is for clipping. This is how you're gonna clip out parts of the video that you do not want. So now that we have it lined up and we're cutting out the reporter's voice, we're gonna click it. And it separates it into two different clips, basically, on the timeline. Now we are going to click this first little clip that we don't want. Make sure it's highlighted and selected and that the other one is dimmed out. And we're going to hit the delete key. And it's going to delete it off and it's going to automatically move the clip that we want over to the start of the video. If it does not do this for you, you can of course just simply drag it along the timeline and line it back up. But it should do it automatically. So we're going to play it back now. Make sure it looks natural. Yep, it does. And then you see that she starts talking again, so we're going to line it up, play it, 
until he's done talking and kind of nodding there. Hit cut again. That one's not useful. Oh, I love it. It's awesome. We do want that clip right there where he says, oh, I love it. It's awesome. So we're going to line it up before he starts that. Hit the scissors. Delete this clip using the same way, using the delete key. Play it back. Hit space to pause it there. Cut it. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of the rest of this video. Now we're going to want this clip a little bit more towards the end of the video. And so I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. Now we're going to line up this interview with this guy right here. So we're going to put it on video one as well. We have camera shaking. Interview with someone else right here. Oh, hello. We're going to find our place. Now here it's a bit more tricky where they stop talking because they kind of talk over each other. So we're going to play it back again. Oh, perfect timing. So we're going to line that up, cut it. Delete that first segment, and I believe it's actually, let me zoom back out. Yeah, I just kind of dragged it back to the beginning of where that clip was. So we're going to go all the way back over here. And we just want a quick little blurb from this guy. Hit pause right there, that's when he's done talking, and we're going to delete the end clip. Now we have two interview clips. Now since we want, we also want that last clip of the first guy talking at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to line up the second clip with that. See how it automatically just kind of lines it up? And then we're actually going to take this short clip of him saying, oh I love it, it's awesome, and drag it just out here over to the right. And then if you click the space on the timeline on the video track between these, the first and second clip, it'll actually highlight it and you can hit delete. And the same thing for this one, and it'll automatically line them up and get rid of that extra space. Now, one last thing we're going to do in this project is add a bit of B-roll, which is just kind of raw video that's not the interview itself that we're going to overlay over top the audio of the video, uh, of the interview. So we're going to take this shot of the police cars and put it on video two. Now, we don't want it to cover everything. We just simply want it to cover part of that inner of the first interview so we're gonna drag it over kinda see what that shot goes and that's a good spot to stop right there we're gonna hit the scissors icon like before and delete that off the top now one thing since there's no significant nat sound or natural sound that's coming from this video of the cop cars the only sound you can see it's very flatlined in the audio of track down here the only sound that's going to be coming from that is basically the hum of like cars or air conditioner units outside or cars driving by. We don't really want that behind the interview anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to mute that track because we do not want it. The best way to do so is just clicking that speaker button right there on the audio track itself. As you see it turns it to a black line and no audio will play from that track now. And we are ready to render our video. So first, you want to make sure you save your project. You always want to save your project awesome. I should have probably gone over that a bit more at the beginning, but just make sure, especially before you render, because your render every once in a while can crash. Before you render, make sure you save. But make sure if you're doing a lot of editing, make sure you're saving awful, awful. Make sure you're saving often, because it can be pretty common that when you're in the middle of editing, your editor may crash, especially if you have a slower computer or an unstable computer. A million different reasons can cause it to crash and you don't want to lose hours of saved work. Take it from me, it is very frustrating. Now once you're ready to render your video here, you're going to go to publish and share in the right hand corner up here. We're going to say computer and that is the best option to do so. You can do upload to social video, social video sharing websites and things like that. But that creates a file that's very specific for it and in many cases actually automatically makes you walk through that process. So if we make a YouTube specific video, it's going to make us upload it to YouTube. We don't really want to do this for the purpose of this tutorial. We just want to make a video that we can save on the computer and then later upload to the web. So we're just going to go to computer. Now it has a few different options of presets and things like that here. Now, the best option to go with if you don't really know what you're doing in this aspect is to go to AVCHD in the basically codec line here. 
and then in the presets drop down box here hit YouTube widescreen HD and we're gonna change this a little bit so we're gonna go to advanced you can see it lists some settings right here below that box of how it's set up but we're actually gonna change that because that while, while that's a preset it has it's not what I would consider optimal for web video so multiplexing it's an mp4 file which means it's gonna be compatible for playing on your computer as well as playing on the internet and we're gonna go here we're gonna check the resolution we're gonna make sure it's 1280 by 720 we're actually working with 1080p footage in this video but for the sake of if you're working with standard definition footage or you're working with HD footage or anything like that you want to make sure 1280 by 720 is just the default if you want to go up and render and set up the settings for 1080p be my guess just make sure you increase the bitrate but overall 720p is a perfect default to start with however under frame rate we want to change it to 29.97 this is web default this is what you should be playing videos for on the web make sure make sure make sure field order is set to none progressive if you set it to upper or lower that does what's called interlacing and while you may not know it by the word you've certainly seen it on videos before it's where like anytime there's motion there's a bunch of lines going across the video where like the frames aren't matching up that it works well on TVs but it doesn't work well for web video and it just looks absolutely awful under level here we're actually gonna go to 4.1 and then go back and change your frame rate to 29.97 if it changed it like it did for me just now bitrate settings we're gonna leave it on VBR 2 pass and if we're doing 720p video the maximum bitrate should be 10 and then leave the target bitrate at 8 or even make it 8.5 this is how many megabytes per second the video is going to be. It may seem like a lot to you, but when you're uploading to a website like YouTube, it, it, it compresses the video itself. And so you want to have the highest quality original video that you upload as possible. So when it compresses it, it makes a higher quality video. Now it'll also tell you a preview of the estimated file size down here. This is not perfect, but it gives you a gist of how big it's going to be. We're about 16 seconds. It's about 19 megabytes not too bad over here under the audio tab the only thing we really want to change is the bitrate 64 kilobytes per second is awful if you want to save space you can do 256 kilobytes per second but I go with 320 again getting the best quality possible to start with and you know ends up with the best quality upload we're gonna hit ok it's gonna ask you to name the preset we're gonna call it YouTube 720p hit OK and now you have that preset ready to go every time you're ready to render a video from now on next you name your video we're gonna name this cadet tutorial test where we're gonna save it we're gonna save it to my project folder I had going here for the tutorial and then you're gonna hit save and it's gonna render your media media and depending on the length of your video if you have a really long video or the speed of your computer if you have a really slow computer it may take a really long time this is normal video rendering is actually very CPU intensive video editing and rendering is not meant to be done on lower end computers or laptops or anything like that so if you're doing so on it expect it to be slow uh, however we're only doing a 16 second video and I'm on a custom built video editing machine so it only took about a minute to render the video so it's gonna finish rendering here and should be done it says save complete your video has been saved click done we're gonna go find that video and test it it should not be in here it should be under the project folder and it is called cadet tutorial test you see it is 20 megabytes so or 19.6 it's a dot mp4 format and if we play it uh, what I do is I go around. it is here it is 720p it is looking good and it plays and it will upload to YouTube pretty pretty well there's our clips just quick cuts between them and there's that last clip looks great nothing's messed up pretty good to go so that is how you do your basic video project in Adobe Premiere Elements 12 next we will be moving on to a couple different ways of doing voiceover and then overlay lower third graphics Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, thank you for watching. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, all that jazz. Leave me a comment in the comment section below if you have questions or a, another tutorial you would like to see, and I will try to get to it as soon as possible. 
Bye-bye.